tonight we are tracking the aftermath after tornadoes swept through Oklahoma last night and again this afternoon. You're looking at video of just some of the damage around Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management says four deaths are now confirmed related to last night's severe storms. The Fox 23 severe weather team traveled to the hardest hit areas. We have team coverage throughout this newscast showing you the damage in Holdenville, Sulphur, Wagner, Morris and Oklahoma City. So glad you're with us tonight. You're watching Fox 23 News at 10. I'm Shay Rossi. And I'm John Asibas. Thanks for joining us tonight. Also joining us, certified meteorologist Mike Grogan. It's really been a hectic couple of days. It has been busy really since Friday morning. We have been on the air continuously for over 10 hours. So this has been a busy stretch of time mm -hmm. covering several rounds of tornadoes. And I want to get to those reports. Starting with last night, we ended up with storms blowing through much of green country. We'll even take you back to tomorrow morning. And what you'll see is the first tornadoes were reported in the morning on Saturday north of Enid. And then during the afternoon on Saturday, we had a rash of tornadoes just about at the edge of our viewing area and very, very close to the Chautauqua County border into Kansas. And this area got nine confirmed or at least nine tornado warnings uh, throughout the afternoon and evening. That's Chautauqua County. Wild to get nine times sirens blowing from separate storms. Well, that was the first part. The second part came through affecting a much broader section of green country, producing its first tornadoes down around the Norman area. We also had tornadoes down I-35, and then we had our own tornadoes in green country starting near Holdenville, and then a rash of them coming up from Okmogi into the Okmogi County area into Wagner County along uh, leading edge tornado potential, and then that continued eastward from there. And altogether, you can see the Tornadoes spanning the state from the Red River into Kansas. You'll hear about a couple of these, two of which were EF3 tornadoes, many of which have yet to be rated. And of course, on top of all that, we had a number of wind damage reports as well. Since Friday morning, 23 tornadoes have been reported in our state. And we're not fully done with the storms yet. We have a few thunder showers in southeast Oklahoma and one final batch trying to come in from the west, producing some lightning and thunder near Chandler and also a little thunder shower approaching Oilton in northwestern Creek County. Some of this activity could get a little closer to Tulsa tonight. We still have a boundary to come through, but by morning we're waking up to dry conditions. Temperatures in the upper 50s, perhaps some patchy fog. And as we move forward, we do have a dry day before rain and storm chances return in greater abundance as we move towards midweek. We'll talk more about that in your 10-day forecast ahead. All these businesses in downtown Sulphur just overnight uh, have, been, have been wiped out, so we need to help Sulphur rebuild. It's just the, uh, it's the amount of damage that was done. So uh, we've got early reports. They think this is an F, F4 uh, just kind of blowing right through downtown here. And um, uh, I just haven't seen this much destruction uh, from from uh, from my time as governor. Governor Kevin sit toward the damage across Oklahoma today. We brought you that news conference live around 1:30 this afternoon from Sulphur, where Sit says we know that one person died. The storm reduced buildings to rubble and took the roofs off of homes across a 15-block radius. And look at that flooding right there. Governor Sit issued a state of emergency for 12 counties. The state says 100 people were injured from cuts, falls, being struck by or being thrown into something, and transportation-related issues. Injuries. The governor has promised the state and federal government will help affected towns to rebuild. Our Fox 23 severe weather team coverage continues now in Holdenville and Hughes County. That's where two people are confirmed dead, including a baby. It's just so heartbreaking. Fox 23 anchor Rick Marin, I went to Holdenville to get a look at the hardest hit places. There are multiple families just around Holdenville who have living situations just like this one. But I'm told by emergency managers when it comes to supplies and things like that, Walmart and the American Red Cross have already stepped up. If you feel the urge to help right now, they're asking you to pray for these families for the things they have to experience in the weeks ahead. My whole family lives up and down Highway 48. So I was on the phone with my mom and dad. They were in the cellar and we saw it at their, we could tell it was over their house. Stephanie Kazee watched on TV and at times in person as Saturday night's tornado moved in on her family's properties just outside of Holdenville. This house belongs to her Aunt Judy. It still had walls, but when it came to the roof itself, it ended up across the street and in a nearby field. And then we got Judy on the phone, my aunt here, and we knew it was on her house. And my husband said, uh, it's about to hit. And she said, I think it already hit. And he said, no, it's about to hit right now, get down. 
and we heard it explode our house. With two dead, including an infant and four injured, Stephanie says her family counts themselves as lucky, despite the work of rebuilding just getting started. Her aunt just moved back in last week after the home was damaged in a storm and completely remodeled over the last nine months. Two, three lifetimes of work to put all this together and in moments it's gone. To the south and west of her aunt's house, homes either erased from their foundations or at least missing walls and roofs. Some tried to speak with me, but were too emotional about how close they got, not just to losing it all, but losing their lives. If you're wondering what this is the remains of, we were told by emergency managers this was a double wide trailer that was completely swept away and blown at least for a quarter of a mile north is where the debris from this house is now. Emergency management says this double wide home is where the infant who died lived. The circumstances of what happened are not clear, but judging by how the manufactured home looks now doesn't require too much imagination. We have quite a bit of structure damage, anywhere from minor to completely gone. Uh, we have four injuries and two fatalities, and uh, an adult male and a four month old infant. Were they together? No, okay. no, they were not. Mike Dockery is the Hughes County Emergency Manager. A command post was set up shortly after the storm passed, but by the end of Sunday, everyone said they were good on resources and help. He says the actual central part of the city of Holdenville dodged a bullet, but the rural parts of town were still too close for comfort. I would like to ask is for prayer for the families that had had that lost loved ones and that lost their homes. Stephanie says she knows the family who lost the baby. And with it being such a small town, many do. They say it's a shocking loss for everyone and they can only imagine what the parents are feeling. But it's also that small town mentality that had people here ready to help without ever being called on to assist. We had over 30 people up here today helping us, didn't ask, bringing food, bringing water, getting dirty, throwing, throwing things away, uh, you know, just sifting through everything to find what was valuable. When it comes to damage like this, this is the worst part of Saturday's tornado is even if you still have the walls standing and all of your stuff is it inside the home for the most part. The problem is, is not only was there rain right after the tornado, there was rain also on Sunday. So a lot of the things that would usually be saved were soaking wet by the time pickup began. North of Holdenville covering news that matters. I'm Rick Marin on Fox 23 News. Our severe weather team coverage continues in Sulphur. We told you Governor Kevin said announced we know that one person died there. Fox 23's Jenna James talked with people whose homes were ripped apart by the storm. After Saturday night's tornado in Murray County, people here in Sulphur are working on cleanup, which is going to be a long process. Have you ever seen anything like this? I've never seen anything like this. And I've lived in Oklahoma all my life. Just devastation everywhere. There's a bunch of rubble. Uh, there ain't much standing downtown. Uh, it's bad. It's bad. Casey McCracken and her aunt Vicki showed us the houses hit the hardest, including Casey's grandmother's. That wall blew out. And look, there's a tree limb in here. But you can see straight through from the back door to the front door and there's debris everywhere. Had she had been there, she would have definitely passed away. Casey says her dad was asleep on Saturday night when this piece of wood flew through the window and hit him in the back of the head. Then he woke up and called her. My dad is blind and he lives right over here and I had to get an act of Congress to get over here to get my dad. So I had to talk to an officer, he let me through, then I had to go to this checkpoint and then I had to use that officer's name to get through, then they let me through. I was like, my dad is blind. Like, please let me through. Murray County Emergency Management reported multiple injuries, including around 20 at the bar that collapsed. Crews went house to house to check on neighbors. Right as soon as it hit, it went right over our house. It flew, flung open the cellar door. When the cellar door opened up, um, a bunch of debris. When we finally went to try to get out, it was completely covered. We called uh, emergency responders. Governor Kevin Stitt spoke about the devastation and funding to rebuild. We're going to help uh, Sulphur rebuild, and they've lost a lot here and all the, the businesses, and uh, um, it's just uh, it's un it's un unbelievable. But thank, thank goodness we, it wasn't, wasn't worse on the, on, the, uh, on the injury side. In Sulphur, covering news that matters, Jenna James, Fox 23 News. Continuing our severe weather team coverage, many highways and local roads are closed after last night's tornadoes. Fox 23's Paris Rain is live in the newsroom after talking with the Oklahoma Department of Transportation. Paris, many are closed due to debris, flooding or downed power lines. 
That's right, Shay. In just a moment, I'll show you a list of those highways. But ODOT says these are temporary closures. Although they are a team effort, though, they aren't sure of a specific time right now on when these highways will open back up. The Oklahoma Department of Transportation is responding to many counties that were hit with tornadoes and severe weather Saturday night into Sunday. Bryce Boyer with ODOT says they are taking actions to keep roads safe due to flooding, debris, and tore down power lines. And with that, you know, we had some uh, severe weather debris to close down some of our roadways, and we've had some high water close down some of our uh, highways as well. Boyer says the safety of the traveling public is ODOT's top priority. If you take a look at your screen, these are the highways that have now opened back up in Holdenville, Marietta, and McAllister. And here are the highways that are still shut down due to debris, flooding, or torn down live power lines. In Chicota, west of McAllister, Haleyville, and in Sulphur. Now, I know you said there's a handful of counties that are closed, but are they going to be closed throughout the day? Or will people who go to work tomorrow be affected at all by any of these new closures? Sure. Yeah, it really depends on kind of what's causing the closure. So we currently have six closures. So it really is just depending on what these closures are. Some of these are due to high water and that is just, you know, it's kind of out of our control. It's just a matter of how long it takes for that water to recede. Uh, some of it's for storm damage. Boyer says they advise everyone who lives in the counties that were hit the hardest by Saturday night's tornadoes to find an alternate route because there is a good chance you will have a detour. The best thing you can do is plan your route before you go. Uh, if you are driving during this time of year and you see water on the roadway, don't test it. If you have a highway that you usually take and it's closed down right now, you can head over to our website at fox23.com to find out how you can stay updated on those road closures and openings just before you head out for work tomorrow morning. Live in the newsroom covering news that matters, I'm Paris Ring, Fox 23 News. We have video of even more storm damage in green country. On the left side of your screen is video from Wagner, where a small tornado snapped trees and damaged roofs and broke windows. And on the right side of your screen is video from Morris, where storms knocked over fences and trees fell on the homes. We'll stay to on top of the recovery efforts and bring you updates here on air and on Fox23.com.